Yes, guys, welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another preview. This time, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to start a weekly thing where we get fans from other channels and we end up talking about previewing the game because it gets a better perspective about the game. It gets a better perspective of the opposition. And honestly, it just sounds better than me going on about Chelsea for 10 minutes. So I've got Hal from the Sheffield, the Chef Way review, right? Chef United Way. <laughs> Chef United Way. I'm so sorry about that. But yeah, if you just want to intro yourself. Yeah, by the way, that name comes from uh, a song that uh, John Egan penned. He is our centre back, and uh, he he's described he us, music. Yeah, he described us as playing football the Chef United way. So we were like, oh, oh, that's we where you got the name from. We'll take that. Yeah, so uh, we now sing that as fans on the terraces when we used to be able to go, and uh, it's a really really popular chant. So yeah, that, that's where it comes from. That is mad, and honestly, that's also a great icebreaker as well. Um, yeah, guys, everyone subscribe to the Chef United Way if you haven't done so already. I'm going to leave a link down in the description as well. So if you guys haven't done so, press the button. It only takes a second to do. And also, if you're pressing buttons, press the like and subscribe button on this video as well. Help us get a little bit closer to 17k because we're getting there. It's taking a while, but we are getting there. But again, like and subscribe and we'll go straight into this preview. Sheffield United, you had an amazing season last season. But it hasn't really been the same for you guys since then. What's happened? Has it been, we say, a bit of second season syndrome or is there anything deeper than that? What's been going on with Sheffield United this season? It's a good question, Lewis. And you could look at the lockdown and say, since then, our form has been poor. And that's true. In fact, the last team we beat was uh, Chelsea, uh, convincingly. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, really, the last good performance was Chelsea. We have beaten Chelsea more times than any other team in the Premier League. Uh, so Chelsea's a team we like playing. But our form was fantastic. You saw us at the bridge uh, last season. We started mm. really poorly. Dean Henderson made a rare error. Jack O'Connell made a rare error. Both of those are out. Dean Henderson now plays for Manchester United. We only had him on loan. And Jack O'Connell is injured. He is our Virgil van Dijk. Both of them made uh, un uncharacteristic errors. And we were 2-0 down. Then we came back and drew two all. And who knows, that game could have gone either way. So that was the kind of fighting spirit that we saw from the Blades last season. And it has completely disappeared. And I don't think even Chris Wilder can put his finger on why. It can't just be the injuries, although we do have injuries to Lise Mousse, who, get this, started 12 games for the Blades last season and scored six goals. He's out. John Fleck. Wait, you only started 12 games for you guys? Yeah, he came on as a sub loads of times, but... Uh, oh, okay. So, you know, I ended up having a lot more appearances, but it sounds much better when I put it like that. Mm. And uh, John, John Fleck as well, arguably for many people, our player of the season. He's out. Jack O'Connell, as I already mentioned, he is our rock. rock and then have that left-hand side threat, because as you know, we have overlapping centre-backs that attack. Now we have just the right-hand side, which makes us far more predictable. Okay, so... We would you say it's a case of lockdown also coming at exactly the wrong time for you guys? Yeah, what we really need is the season to be halted again so that we can get our injured players back. Here's the thing. Injury record is probably going to get worse as the season progresses because we're about to go into the Christmas period. I mean, with us as well, I'm extremely worried because we've got like three games a week until December with Champions League football on top. I think it's going to be a struggle for all teams across the league and... It's probably going to be an even worse issue for you guys as the season progresses. Yeah, I mean, I think we've got one of the thinnest squads. I mean, everyone's got the same size squad in the Premier League. You register those 25 and that's what you've got. But you've got your young players as well. And, and we have a good youth setup. So there's a little bit of excitement there. Our youth team are absolutely crushing it. And the kind of players that Sheffield United produce and have produced over the years are England international quality. Harry Maguire, Kyle Walker, Phil Jagielka, one of my favourites. Uh, we produce really, really good players and we will continue to do that. So we might have to dip into that pool because you're absolutely right. The Christmas period just seems to create injuries that then have a knock-on effect and we just cannot afford, with arguably our three best players being out, to have any more. Yeah, I think this season's already seen more muscle injuries than any other season in Premier League history. And I do want to touch on youngsters because... Two youngsters that you guys have, Ryan Brewster and also Chelsea's own Ethan Ampadu. We know Ampadu isn't going to be eligible for this well, match. You know, Rian Brewster started at Chelsea. Go on. Rian Brewster started at Chelsea. 
Oh, yeah, he did. So How that's... many players do we have from Cobham <laughs> in the Premier League? Like, like, literally, I think every team has an ex-Chelsea player at this point. Now, that is, I wanted, I couldn't go through this video, though, about talking about Ethan Ampadu. How good's he been for you guys this season? His last appearance was his worst appearance. And that's a shame because he's oh. actually, I know. Uh, but, I mean, against Manchester City, who who played well for us? No one. Okay. Just, we didn't really turn up. But Ampadu was... Mm -hmm particularly disappointing because he'd been and I and I, I really mean this he'd been so good and he is someone we're really excited about he has looked like he's just taken to it like a duck to water he seems to know instinctively where the ball is he looks good in that defensive midfield role he's been playing that kind of deep lying midfield role where we normally play Oli Norwood he hasn't been playing too much in defence. He played in defence against Aston Villa when uh, Egan got ridiculously sent off uh, a red that was never a red. Uh, but normally, I think we're going to utilise him in midfield and he's, he's looked quite comfortable apart from Man City. OK, well, that's very promising to hear. And as always, I always hope he has an amazing season for you guys. But going back to the game, how do you fancy yourselves for this match? Because... Again, looking at the shape of the table, it doesn't really look like it's going any other way. But this season is crazy. And like you already said, you like your record against us. We're the last team that you guys have beaten. I think you said on your video that you've beaten us more than any other Premier League side. So how much do you fancy your chances? Because I do think if you frustrate us or try and do what Burnley did, but actually end up sticking around for a bit longer, the game could flow in your way. It depends on how the game goes. Same way with Chelsea. I mean, if we do get our chances, I expect Timo Vern or Hakim Ziyech or any of the attackers to take their chances. But I'm not trying to underestimate your defence as well. I know you guys have a very solid defence regardless of your recent form. And it's going to be a test for us because we've struggled to blow blocks in the past. Jorginho as well, I do think, might end up playing, but he's had a poor recent game. Mm -hmm. So it's about looking, taking it a game at a time still. We're gelling now. I just want to see how we go into this game. But how are you think, feeling about it from a Sheffield United perspective? I mean, if I'm a neutral, I'm looking at this and I'm betting the house on Chelsea. Because I'm not a neutral and I've spoken to you offline about how I've watched Chelsea from the Matthew Harding upper on numerous occasions with good friends of mine. But I am a blade and I watch Sheffield United every single week. We are good in defence. When we have our full strength midfield, we're very good in midfield. But we are pretty terrible up front. And that's our weakness. And we only look like scoring from set pieces. And those set pieces might need to be multiple penalties. Uh, <laughs> because that we, Manchester United flex. Yeah, but we don't get that because, uh, you know, we're a so-called smaller team. So we would mm. need to be, as you might have seen in our game against Liverpool, you know, we got a penalty in that game. But then there was two arguably clear penalties that weren't given to us. And you think that might have been just because, well, we can't give Sheffield United three penalties at Anfield. That would be ridiculous. So yeah, you do feel a little bit... Yeah, for that. Yeah, you do feel a little bit like that's something that's in the back of referees' minds. So mm. I don't expect us to create a lot. We are good at the back. If we make individual errors, you'll score. If we play the best of our ability, every player on the pitch has a 10 out of 10, and Chelsea have an off day, we could hope for a nil-nil. Nil-nil? Okay. I, just, I, I can't see a scoring, Lewis. Okay, well, that does leave me with a lot more optimism going into this match. <laughs> with that in mind, any danger men for this match? Any players that we should be looking out for? Yeah, Sander Berger is an outstanding player. Uh, a player that I just never thought Sheffield United would be able to acquire in my lifetime. Big money, 20 million plus that we spent on this Norwegian lad. Uh, he's played in the Champions League. He's got so much about him to... You look at him and you think... This guy could fit in any top six side in the world and he wouldn't look out of place. He maybe does look out of place at Bramall Lane sometimes because he just, he's, he just oozes class. Uh, he just doesn't give the ball away. Incredibly strong. Good in the air. He's a tall lad. Got a good shot on him. Takes a wicked penalty. Uh, everything he's got in his game. He seems like a natural baller. Uh, really excited to have him. On their, you know, when they're fit, John Fleck, obviously. So, but he, he's not going to play uh, as well as Lisa Mousse. So those would be kind of key players. Uh, we haven't seen enough of Rian Brewster to know if he is going to be a key player. He's actually taken to our style of play, which is a unique style of play. Anyone who thinks that Sheffield United kick and rush haven't watched Sheffield United since Neil Warnock left 
we actually play really exciting brand of football. I mentioned the overlapping centre-backs. It takes mm. a long time for new players, including Sanderberger, to get the hang of how we play. Rian Brewster hasn't got the hang of how we play yet. I didn't look good against Man City. He looked like a boy against men. Didn't fancy it against Laporte. If he decides, first of all, if he starts, but if he decides that, okay, I get it now. I know where the runs are going to be. I know Ollie McBurney's going to win everything in the air, because he does and I can start to position myself in the right place, then we could have a really exciting front two on our hands. I personally think Chris Wilder will go with Oli Burke. Uh, I think he likes the look of him away from home, uh, probably with McBurney. And Oli Burke is just pace, just raw pace. Uh, but he hasn't scored a single goal for us. So we'll see. Okay, well, again, I'll, I'll be real. I have to go into this game with a bit of optimism. But final question, score prediction. Well, I already think nil-nil is, is probably the best we can hope for. It sounds incredibly down, and I'm normally the most positive blade on earth, but it's taken its toll these last few games. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm really struggling. Uh, you know, uh, we've got a draw against Fulham, and second half, they should have beaten us. And they're probably going to go down. You know, it's not good. So we look a completely different side to last season. I'm trying to get my five-year-old nephew into football. Uh, he's loving football, but at the moment, he keeps asking me, are Sheffield United always this boring? And that breaks my heart. Oh, I want, no. It breaks my heart, Lewis. I want to start playing like the Sheffield United of last season, the season before, the season before, the Chef United way, wilder ball. If we go back to playing proper Sheffield United football, we already showed what we could do against Chelsea. You know, put five past you last season. Mm. If we carry on playing like we are this season, and you score early, I, I really am fearful. But I'm going to say we're going to play it not quite the Chef United way because we're just missing too many players. Nil nil. Okay, I'll be real. I have to go for a convincing 3 0 win, but it's only because you said set pieces was your strong suit. And now because we've got Edward Mendy, Cut, Zuma, and Silver. Like, set, if it was last season, like you saw both the games, in fact, our set pieces, our defending them, our attacking them were terrible. This season's a completely different beast. So I have to go for a convincing 3 0. I know this is also getting clipped as well, but looking at it on paper, it just has to be that way. But again, thank you for jumping on. As usual, like I've already said, subscribe to the Chef United way. There will be a link down in the description below and it'll be in the pinned comments as well. Um, any final thoughts? Yeah, I'm normally more positive if you do subscribe. <laughs> uh, I think it was 3-0 when we played you uh, at the bridge 2006-07 when we were under Neil Warnock, who I've already referenced here. So you might not be far off. I, I really, really, really hope you're wrong. And I would love nothing more than a Blades victory, a convincing Blades victory, but I just can't see it. Hey, I just hope you guys stay up. Like I already said in your video, I want to tick off the ground. I haven't gone Bramall Lane yet. Yeah, we want to welcome you to Bramall Lane. Uh, I really, really hope we stay up. I feel like we're a team that deserves to stay up and had all this nonsense not happened in the, in the world. I really think we'd be in a very, very different position right now. It seems to have affected us more than any other team. We really need our fans back in us, particularly at the lane. But the games that decide whether Sheffield United stay up or go down are not Chelsea away. Yeah, it's coming soon. You've got West Brom away soon, haven't you? We got we got West Ham as well. We got them all. We got them all coming up. We just need to get our fans back in as soon as possible, and that's not going to happen this year. All right. Well, thanks for jumping on again. Um, best of luck throughout the season, guys. Like and subscribe. And yeah, thanks for coming on, bro. Massively appreciated.